Welcome to Corel Painter Sergeant vs. Master Course, an in-depth series where we will learn about the Sergeant vs. tool set and how to apply them on different subjects such as still life, portraiture, architecture and landscapes. Our classes will have a gradual level of complexity, from simple sketching to more advanced techniques. Whether you are a beginner or an advanced artist, you are welcome to stay with us. We believe there is something for everyone in this course. Now, allow me to introduce myself. I am Isis Souza, mostly a self-taught artist. I have 18 years of career starting out as a graphic designer for the music industry, then switching to full-time digital painter slash illustrator and for the last few years I have been doing more concept art and for the past year or so I have been doing more visual development. I have also been an educator for the past six years, teaching art at public art school system in Norway, um, lecturing in different institutions in Europe and United States, including some universities. In this introductory class, we will have an overview of our tools learn the qualities and properties of the different sergeant brushes. Let's get started! The first brush we are seeing is on an artist's favorite set and it's simply called sergeant brush and it is compatible with thick paint layers which I think it's an amazing feature. I remember on previous editions of Painter this was not possible by the way, this is my preferred brush of all sergeant brushes, so all my personal paintings, it's the one I use most. So I'm super biased talking about it. I think it has the finest balance between digital and traditional, and it has some wet oils characteristics. But at the same time, it has a signature that looks super cool for a digital workflow. The nice thing about it is its unique structure, that reveals with different pressure levels, especially on a soft side. The colors tend to be much more vibrant and yet pleasant. I also think they look quite natural. On full resaturation, it has a minimal blendability. On low resaturation, the blendability becomes quite elegant and the colors look pleasant. And I think the blended colors and their very structure is one of the most beautiful we see here on Painter. Then we scroll down and find the sergeant set. And we have 10 brushes. I find them very interesting, but I personally find the first one we just saw to be the most valuable of them all. And I am sure each of you may resonate more with one particular sergeant brush or brushes for your particular art style or needs. So here in this set we start with the blocky background. To me it behaves a lot like some greasy dry media, something between crayons and oil pastels. In order to get a dense color I have to apply several strokes. The blendability on full resaturation, a small degree of blendability. On low resaturation, it doesn't have any changes really. The drippy jellyfish, it has such a funny name. And it may be the wildest brush in the set. I think it has a super cool signature and structure something similar to using a dirty brush on acrylics or oils when the paint is on the process of drying. On full resaturation it has a great degree of blendability and I love this feature on this brush. One downside with it is that for people who has less experience it may be difficult to control this brush as it adds both dark and light values along the color value you choose. It's like painting with a monochromatic set of three values at the same time within each brush stroke. On low resaturation, it gives you a very interesting color mixing experience. 
um, but the colors tend to get muddy. Grainy pressure knife. Imagine if you had oils mixed with ink markers. It will be something like this. On full resaturation, it is very wet, like a mix of thinned oils and ink. But the brush structure has the looks of a marker. It's very three-dimensional, so when you tilt your pen and apply different pressure, you get some cool results. It's like a marker that you can use for calligraphy. On low saturation, it has super high level of blendability, but the colors look bright and vibrant, very beautiful and pleasant, rather than muddy. So we go to the light liquid sketcher. Um, this brush is like a crossover between liquid ink and airbrushed paint. It has also a very nice elegant profile with varying pressure sensitivity. On full resaturation, it is very blendable, creating a marble-like and even fractal effect. Um, there is very little difference when used in low resaturation. Oily water. It's self-explained. It's like if you have added water and solved the pigment of pastels with a touch of crayons and a little bit of thinned oils. And it has very little blendability. Um, it works in the same way with high or low resaturation. Real Bristle Soft. This brush has a great response to tilting and pressure sensitivity, making the strokes very similar to what you experience in real life. The paint feels more like something in between acrylics and gouache. It has no blendability on full resaturation, but it blends okay on low resaturation. simple. Well, I have problems with this brush. I don't know what gives. Every time I change any setting on it, the brush stroke will almost disappear. And the only way to bring it back is to go to the brush tracking and make it track my brush stroke signature again. So then I get stuck in a loop, unable to do anything. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this problem. Um, so my work with this brush is inconclusive. Of this reason, we are not exploring it in our course. Speckle Grainy Hard Drip. It has an interesting subtle bristle structure, but in full resaturation the colors look unpleasantly comic and extremely saturated. In low resaturation, it has very good, very natural blendability. And it is about this point that this brush is more interesting to me, as it becomes more apt to painting realism. Speckle Sticky Bristol. And this is my least liked brush on a set. It's a bristles, but it changes nothing whether you apply high or low with saturation and it has zero blendability. Um, the colors look overly saturated, so in my opinion, I think it has no use in a sergeant collection, and of these reasons, I decided not to use it for our course. Our last brush is the stencil flower map. Um, as the name suggests, it works like a stencil. You can change the patterns by going to the shape options on the main brush menu and you can also invert the flower map um, like a negative picture. I particularly don't find this brush as the previous one 
relevant to what we are going to do in our course. And the reason is I don't want you to apply any finished textures to the works we are going to produce here. So of this reason, this one is also crossed off our tool list as well. But there you go, it's an extra option for um, your creative work. So regardless, I recommend that you experiment with it if you want to. Well, we have come to the end of our introductory class and now you have a general overview of our tools. I highly recommend that you test these brushes and you simply play with them to see how the colors mix and how you can combine them as well as to get to grips with their particular stroke signature. On our next class, um, we will see some simple sketching and from there on we will increase the level of complexity for various techniques and subjects. So thank you so much for watching, Corel Painter and I hope this class has been helpful to you and see you soon! Stay creative, stay positive and inspired.